for some of us, abundance is about having so much of everything that you need two houses, one for you and another for your stuffs, right? But what exactly is abundance and how can we experience it? Well, in the broadest sense, abundance refers to a large quantity of something. But when we turn to the Bible, we find that it offers a much richer, much deeper perspective on what abundance truly means. Biblical abundance is not merely about money or material wealth, although these could be a part of it. It goes much further. It speaks of an overflow, a rich supply in all areas of life. And that's the kind of abundance we all need. The abundance God envisions for us covers the entire spectrum of our existence. It speaks of joy in our hearts that spills over into our everyday lives. It talks about peace in our spirits that transcends the chaos of the world around us. It highlights wisdom that guides us along the right paths. It is about health in our bodies that enables us to serve God effectively. It addresses relationships that are healthy and life-giving. It embodies spiritual riches that outshine any earthly treasure. As we read in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, God intends for us to have all that we need, and even more so that we can be a blessing to others. The scripture reads, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So we need to be aware of a fundamental distinction here. There is worldly abundance, and then there is God's abundance. Worldly abundance places an almost exclusive emphasis on material possessions and wealth its mantra is always more. More money, more property, more fame, more power. But God's abundance paints a different picture. As we learn from Jesus in John 10 verse 10, God wants to give us life. And not just life, but life in all its fullness. It's not just an abundance of things, but it's also an abundance of experiences and virtues. There are several promises of abundance that we find in God's word. One of them is in Psalms 65, verse 11. The psalmist, caught up in a moment of divine inspiration, declares that God crowns the year with his bounty and his carts overflow with abundance. His promise of abundance is not an empty promise. He fulfills his word. There are numerous instances in the Bible where God steps in to provide in what we could call superabundance. One such story that beautifully captures God's superabundant provision is the feeding of the 5,000. In Matthew 14, verse 13 to 21, we read about Jesus, who moved with compassion for the crowds that had followed him, decides to provide for their physical needs. He takes five loaves of bread and two fishes, a small offering for such a large crowd, blesses them, and they are miraculously multiplied to feed everyone present with plenty left over. This story is a reminder that when we offer what we have to God, However little it might seem, he can multiply it and provide more than we need. We serve a God of more than enough. So, how does one walk along the path towards abundance? There are some guiding principles laid out in the Bible. One of them is obedience. In Deuteronomy 2 verse 1 to 14, God tells his people that if they obey his commands, he will bless them in every way possible. He will set them high above all nations of the earth, and his blessings will come upon them and overtake them. Another principle is faith. In Hebrews 11, we read about many men and women who, through their faith in God, received what was promised. Then there is the principle of generosity. Luke 6 verse 38 tells us that if we give, it will be given to us. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into our laps. However, it's important to keep in mind that abundance can be a test of our character. When we find ourselves blessed with abundance, how do we respond? Do we remain humble and grateful, or do we slip into arrogance and self-reliance? In Deuteronomy 8, verse 12 to 14, the people of Israel are warned about the danger of forgetting the Lord when they have eaten and are satisfied, when they have built good houses and settled in. The love of money, too can lead to all kinds of evil, as Paul warns in 1 Timothy 6, verse 10. When we experience God's abundance, we need to be careful to guard our hearts against these mistakes. Now, 
Let me take a moment to emphasize that our abundance should not just serve our needs and wants. Rather, it should also be used as a resource for furthering God's kingdom. In Genesis 12 verse 2, God blesses Abraham not just for his sake, but so that he can be a blessing to others. The same principle applies to us. Our abundance is not meant to be hoarded. It is meant to be shared. Acts 20 verse 35 reminds us that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Sharing what we have with others, especially those in need, is a key aspect of living a life of abundance. How can you live in abundance, and yet you've never shared anything with anyone? Or how can you live in abundance, and yet you do not share with those who may be in need? We must also remember that our greatest abundance is not found in what we have, but in who we have. Knowing Jesus Christ is the greatest treasure we could ever possess. The Apostle Paul, once a man of high social and religious standing, came to this realization. In Philippians 3 verse 8, he says that he considers everything a loss compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus his Lord. Nothing in this life can equate to what we have in Jesus. Living a life of abundance is not a distant dream. It's a very real possibility. Jesus assures us of this in Matthew 6, verse 33, when he tells us that if we seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, all the things that we need will be added to us. So the abundant life that God promises is not just about material prosperity. It's about experiencing God's love, peace, joy, wisdom, and blessings in every area of our lives. It's about sharing these blessings with others. It's about recognizing that the greatest treasure we have is Christ himself. Let us therefore strive to live this life of abundance always relying on God's provision, sharing what we have with others, and constantly reminding ourselves that in Christ we have everything we need. May God guide us on this journey towards true biblical abundance. Now let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me, either by repeating the words or by saying it in your mind, so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we come before you with humble hearts, thankful for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Father, I thank you for the gift of life, for your protection, and for the provision that you've extended to me and my loved ones. You have been faithful, even when I've been faithless. I am grateful for the abundance you've given me, not only in material things, but more so in love, peace, joy, and grace. I give you thanks for your unconditional love that has been my comfort, for the peace that surpasses understanding, for the joy that is my strength, and for the grace that is always sufficient. I lift up my loved ones to you, Lord. I pray that you guide them, protect them, and provide for their needs. Lord, be their refuge and fortress, their God in whom they can trust. I pray that they will experience your love in a profound way. May they know that nothing can separate them from your love. Precious Lord, I thank you for the privilege of knowing you and having a personal relationship with you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask that you guide me as I seek to know you more. Give me a hunger for your word and a thirst for your presence. May my heart's desire be to seek you first above everything else. Lord, I pray for wisdom. I pray for your wisdom to guide me in every situation. As it is written in James 1 verse 5, if any of us lacks wisdom, we should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to us. I believe in this promise, Lord, and so I ask for wisdom. I pray for my health and the health of my loved ones. I ask for your healing hand to touch any area of our bodies that needs healing. You are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. We thank you for good health and the strength to do your will. I pray for my relationships, dear Lord. May they honor you. In the places where there is strife or discord, I pray for peace. In the areas where there is misunderstanding, I pray for clarity and understanding. In the places where there is hurt, I pray for healing. Lord, I pray for your provisions. I thank you for providing for my needs according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. As you bless me, make me a blessing to others. Help me to be generous just as you have been generous to me. 
Lord, I ask that you bless the work of my hands. I also pray for those who are in pain, those who are suffering, and those who have lost hope. May they experience your comfort and peace. Show them that you are a very present help in times of trouble. Lord, in all these things, I ask for your will to be done. For your will is perfect, pleasing, and good. I surrender all to you, trusting that you will work out all things for my good and your glory. Almighty God, I thank you that you are with me always in every situation, in every victory and in every challenge. As I walk through this life, may I do so with a constant awareness of your love, your guidance, and your presence. Thank you for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you in the name of Jesus. Now comment using the word amen and claim this powerful prayer. Be sure to share your testimonies in the comments. Also, send this prayer to at least one of your loved ones or a friend who you know may need the blessing of this prayer. Please feel free to leave your prayer requests in the comments so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. To God be all the glory. May the Lord bless you abundantly and powerfully in the mighty name of Jesus.